Let's talk mixing saxophone. This is Brett with Recording Crave. I have a song here for you that I recorded and played guitar, a little bit of keyboard on, and bass. And then the drums were done in another location in another studio. The saxophone was recorded up in Minneapolis at another studio by a friend of mine, John Birch and the keyboards in Nashville. So this song is a cover song from Steve Perry's 1984 album, Street Talk, and this song is called She's Mine. Let's focus in on the saxophone, and let's take a listen to what I had done to this. I'll play a little snippet of the track, and then we'll jump into it. Okay, so if you listen to that saxophone, that sounds really good, and I wish I could take some credit for it, but it was recorded up in Minneapolis, and so I didn't actually track it, but it was done really well. Okay, so let's that was with processing. Let's bypass the plugins that are on there. Let's hear the raw source and what it sounds like. I'm going to bypass the verb and the uh, delay that I have on there. Okay. And the first thing is, when you have an instrument with multiple microphones on it, you always want to check that the microphones are in phase together. So before we do anything, let's make sure that our phase is set up right. I already know the answer to this, but this is just something that you should check anytime you have multiple mics on one instrument. So let's... Listen to it here. I'm pulling up the plug-in trim from Pro Tools. There's a little phase button over here. So let's listen to this. Let's solo up the saxophone. First of all, before I do that, let me tell you what mics are on here. On the bell of the saxophone, there is an RE20 on there. On the body of the saxophone, there is a Neumann U87. So there's some good mics capturing some good sound. So we're going to get some brighter sounds out of that bell and maybe a little warmer, darker sounds on the body. So let's take a listen to this. I'm going to hit the phase button as we're playing it. So you can hear when I hit the phase button that it went out of phase and it got really thin sounding. Leaving the phase button off is what we need to do here because the mics are perfectly in phase. So it was recorded really well. Okay, let's listen to just the RE20 and hear what that sounds like on its own without any processing. <laughs> Okay, let's jump over to the U87 and take a listen to that. This is on the body. So on the U87, I feel like you can hear a little bit more of the room, even though the room's treated really well. You kind of hear a little bit of the room sound in there, and it's got a lot of warmer tone. Now, if I just had one mic on here, which is the case in many situations when I do horns, um, I would go with the RE20 to get the best sound because we could add some low end in if we needed it. So, But you put these two mics together and you get some great sound. So here's those two mics together again. When I mute the U87, a lot of the warm bottom part of the tone of that saxophone disappears. Let me play that one more time. So both mics are working real well. So let's go over the plugins that I use on this sax part. So on the RE20, I got the CLA 76, and let's play that.
okay? I'm going to play a little bit of that first part of it again, and I'm going to bypass the uh, compressor. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do is tighten up the low part and the high part with the compressor. That, so that's my main goal there. So, so that brings it a little bit closer together to my ears. And uh, we are getting, you know, when it hits the louder part, we are getting about 9, 10 dB of gain reduction, which for some people they might think that sounds really compressed. But you know what? In the track, this works really well. It also gives a little smoothness to the overall sound. So let's go to the EQ next is the Pro-Q3 is what I have. So didn't do a lot here. I just boosted uh, just shy of 3 dB at 7.4K. And then I did a roll off from 100 hertz on down. Let's listen to this. I'm going to leave it in bypass and then I will engage it. You can hear that it just adds a little bit more presence. I didn't want to go crazy with it because the part in this song that it's doing is uh, pretty sparse. So there's just a, basically the piano going. It's a little bit of bass and some cymbals, and that's about it. We don't need a lot there to punch it through a busy mix. Okay, so let's jump over to the U87. Here I'm using the CLA76, and I will say on the CLA76 for the RE20, this is literally the default setting. I've just played it on the default setting, and it worked for me. So that's one little tip that I can give you when you're mixing. You don't always have to go crazy and start turning the dials. When you put, especially like a compressor, they often will have a default setting. Sometimes that is enough. Sometimes it's too much, and sometimes you have to back it off. But this worked for me. And for the U87, I experienced the same thing. This is the default setting, and let's take a listen to what this is doing. Okay, get about 7, 8 dB of gain reduction there. And then the Pro-Q3 is the EQ I'm using. So here what I did is at about 12K, I boosted a little bit. So what I'm hearing on this is just I want to clean up the sound a little bit, I'll take a little bit of the mud out, but I still need that lower frequency that that microphone in, on the body is providing. So, so 12K, I'm boosting about 2.5 dB. At uh, 2K, I have about a 3.5 dB cut. Fairly generous bandwidth there. And then low roll off, I'm going to move that up to about 40. And let's listen to this. I'll engage it while it's playing. Okay, so you can hear what that's doing. And let's bring both mics back in with the processing on and listen to them isolated here. So when I mute that U87, a lot of the depth of the saxophone disappears. So both mics are working really well together to give it that full sound. Now, will this work for every uh, type of genre where there's horns in it? No, because this is more of a, uh, a track that there's a pretty quiet part where the sax has this sultry, swanky feel to it with a lot of verb, which we'll get to in a second. And so it needs a, needs a little bit, you know, it fills out quite nicely. So I like it. Um, 
I have other videos that you can check out. I'll post links up here somewhere uh, of uh, mixing saxophone, mixing horn sections, that uh, my approach is different than what this is. So, so basically, it's all song-specific and also player-specific in the horn sound. Uh, John got a great sound out of his horn and very pleased with the results. So let's come down here, and we'll start with the delay. Got an H delay on here. So let's listen to what the H delay is doing on these horns here. Just very subtle. So you can hear the delay and it's pretty quiet. Let's get up to here the louder part. Okay, I just have it set to the host and uh, eighth dotted and you can see the settings there. This is one of my go-to delays just because I can get fast sounds out of it quickly. I have a couple other, I like the Echo Boy that I have, I like a lot. Uh, Avid's delay is, is a pretty nice little delay too. So um, that's what that's doing. So let's listen to it with the delay and the reverb. <laughs> So the reverb I'm using is the Relab LX480. Love this verb. Very sweet verb. Um, I bought it when it was expensive. Now they've gotten it a lot less expensive. So, But that's the way it goes buying plugins sometimes, right? I'm just using a random hull. You can see the settings here uh, for the verb. Let's go to the RTM. That's 7.45. Size is 38. High frequency where I start to roll off is 9.7. The pre-delay is at 38 milliseconds. And then the level I have on it is 160, and the mix is set up all the way to 100% because I'm running in on an aux channel. So, so let's listen to that one more time. Again, this is a cover version of an 80s song so i, I kind of wanted to stay a little bit true to some of that smattering of reverb but in the context of the mix it isn't quite as strong sounding as that because the other frequencies absorb some of that so let's listen to this into the context of the mix with the verb on So that's what that is doing. So that is how I processed this. Again, two mics on the horn helps tremendously to grab some low end. You got that swanky sound over that solo section there. So I find when I'm mixing a song, I have to do specific things to, to certain instruments um, rather than just having a template for it, like this saxophone. Uh, versus the other videos I've done with mixing horns. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I would love to hear your comments below, uh, maybe what you like about the sound or maybe what you don't like. I know the compression is a big topic for people, especially when it comes to horns specifically, uh, maybe compression overall anyway. But uh, um, give me some feedback down below. Uh, tell me what you do. Tell me if you like the what I've done here with this or tell me what you don't like about it. This is how we all learn. So anyway, this is Brett saying thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video. And be sure to check out one of my Mixing Horns videos right here. Have a great day.